Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video. In fact, we're starting on an entire new unit here. This unit is going to be on bonding and molecular structure. I'm super excited because I love this unit because it has great real world applications. Okay, so our first subject is going to be basic bond types. But here, I'm going to give you the first three slides. These are going to be all the topics that we're going to discuss in this unit here. This is the first one. The second one, okay, look over these topics with care. We're going to be covering all of these. This is going to be fun stuff. And then the next one, that's our last one here on bonding and molecular structure. So let's get started with this unit, all right? Bam! So today we're going to be talking about basic bonding types. There's going to be three basic bonding types. The first one is a pure covalent bond. That is a equal sharing of electrons where there are two non-metals, where there's an equal sharing of electrons, two non-metals. That would be an example of this would be a diatomic molecule. That's a two atom molecule, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Those would all follow that same pattern, but there's chlorine for you. These are nonpolar because there's an equal sharing of electrons. Okay, then we have the middle bond type, which is a pure, co uh, a, sorry, a polar covalent bond. And that's an unequal sharing of electrons. It's still sharing electrons, but unequally. Okay, and a perfect example of that would be hydrochloric acid. That's HCl with an aqueous right there. Okay, and then these things that are polar covalent bonds have what's called a dipole. Di is for two, it has two poles to it. And these would lead to polar molecules. That's gonna be very important here. Then the last bonding type, which is the exact extreme of the pure covalent bond is an ionic bond. And an ionic bond, you have a complete transfer of electrons. Those atoms uh, now that are ions are held together electrostatically, just like uh, the opposite ends of a magnet. One's positive, one's negative. You're gonna have a metal and a non-metal involved in this type of bonding. Sodium chloride, that's NaCl, is a perfect example of that. The sodium is the metal, the chlorine is the non-metal, and there's a transfer of electrons or an electron in this particular case. This is an ionic bond, okay? And if you look under the pure covalent bond, you should see a delta X, and that delta X is a change in electronegativity, or rather, the difference in electronegativity. So if you have a table of electronegativities and you take the difference between those two atoms and it's between zero and 0.2, then that is letting you know quantitatively that it's a pure covalent bond, okay? And this is a basic structure of what we got there. So there, those two atoms there that you see there, um, they are the same. There's an equal sharing of electrons. Then in a polar covalent bond, the change or the difference in electronegativity is between 0.2 and 1.6. Could be a little bit higher than that, depending on which elements there are, but that's a general range. Okay, and you should see this structure right here where you have a delta positive and a delta negative there. That leads to what's called a dipole. So I just wrote that arrow there, that positive end of that arrow where the feathers are to that arrow. That's the positive end of the arrow. And then the negative, the tip of the arrow is the negative part. So imagine if I'm going to shoot an arrow from a uh, bow and arrow, if I'm going to shoot an arrow and it pokes you and I hit you with the arrow, the tip of the arrow is hitting you. And of course, you would view that as being negative because you just got shot by an arrow, whereas it's positive for me because I see the feathers of the arrow sticking out of you. Hmm. Not a, maybe that's a good analogy for you. I'm not sure. Then you're going to look at that ionic bond, and an ionic bond has a De uh, change in electronegativity greater than 2. That's why if the polar covalent bond, there's a little range of the 1.6 to 2, but we're going to skip that for now. Okay, so the change in electronegativity, if it's greater than 2, then this is going to be an ionic bond. And here's a perfect example of this. Notice that there's no overlap in these or orbitals, okay, and you have a positive cation and a negative anion. Okay, and there's a complete transfer of electrons. In this case, the sodium has lost an electron to the chlorine. The chlorine has gained that electron. Okay. Um, oh, here's some bonding humor. So let's get moving on this stuff here. My name is Bond. Covalent Bond. Shared equally. Hmm. All right, here's another one. My name is Bond. Ionic Bond. Taken, not shared. Okay, so... Uh, here's a chemistry pickup line because every now and then you might need one. If you were sodium and I was chlorine, then I get a charge out of bonding with you. 
Hopefully you enjoyed that. Okay, um, that was the first video in this bonding unit, and here is a crazy hat. Okay, so uh, this is a graduated cylinder. Hopefully you can see all that. Okay, so we're going to graduate to this new unit. Hopefully that's a good thing for you. I love this unit, like I said before. Stay tuned. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Pass on my videos to other potential chemistry students, even in college. Have a great day. Bye now.